For interviews on educational technology and for a list of our educational technology workshops, please visit www.edtechlive.com. And for discounted Dell computers, please visit our sponsor, www.k12computers.com. Southampton as a, as a particular area has very low adult education rates. Um, we're not the most uh, successful of cities in putting forward students. So you could say that our students nationally are in a challenged group. I wouldn't say they were at risk, but we have quite low progression routes. So when we originally designed the course to attract these male learners, these were the groups that were probably at the lower end of those that would progress and stay in education and uh, perhaps would then go out to work or not. Potentially we needed something that was going to attract the students. That was uh, the football element. And then we needed something that was going to engage the students a little bit more than we were doing. Uh, and that's where the wiki kind of came in. Hi, this is Steve Hargadon, and it's Wednesday, May 30th, 2007. Welcome to EdTech Live. My guest today is Christian Still, the PE geek. <laughs> Christian, how are you? I'm very well, thank you, Steve. So um, for our interview today, you've actually done something unique. You've set up a trail fire uh, link of websites that, we, that people, listeners can go to as they hear you talk. Yep, they can follow along if they like. Okay, and how would they find that link? Now, I believe uh, they can pick up that link from Trailfire's webpage. It's called Christian Stills Web 2.0 Experience, and then it's uh, 17 links, kind of a tour of uh, my experience to date. I'll put the links in my blog. Christian is spelled with a K, K-R-I-S-T-I-A-N-S-T-I-L-L -L is your username, and I think searching on that in Trailfire will pull up the Web 2.0 Experience trail. Trail Fire allows someone to keep a log of different websites with comments so you can actually follow the trail of those websites. So Christian, tell me what it is that you do for a living. Um, well, the first uh, link is at Taunton's College. I teach um, students here at college are 16 to 19 year old students and then they prepare to go on to uh, what we call higher education or university. So slightly different uh, terminology between us and those across the pond. Um, I teach in a sports and public services department, so obviously most of the sports courses are full-time and then public services are preparations for the police, the army and so forth. And I lead a sports course that we design to encourage male learners to come on to what we would consider you know, extended education. And uh, we decided to teach it through football, soccer, and um, most of our students then also have an enrichments program through the college and they play for the college football teams. So it's a kind of using their sporting interests to help them pursue their academic interests. So what has it got to do with being a geek? <laughs> well, you don't really associate uh, ICT, as we call it over here, information, communication, technology, with a PE department. We, we tend to be more practical. So I am the black sheep of the family, encouraging students to stay inside and work on their assignments when really most of the other staff would expect them to be outside practicing at their skills. So I therefore I'm a geek. <laughs> so would you like to take us to your next slide? Yeah, let's move on. So, I mean, we developed uh, a wiki just because we really didn't have um, any resources to interact with the students beyond the classroom. And everything that we did from here was, was self-taught. So we came up with the BTEC Nationals in Sport, which is our uh, course title. And we played around with uh, a wiki, and we titled it by the course. And uh, Wikispaces offered a, a, great, a great product to us. Uh, it was free. That means it's great. Um, and the people that ran it, we found to be uh, amazingly supportive. So, you know, really, I, I stumbled into Web 2.0 and what I kind of coined as teachology. Um, and it's been a learning curve for myself uh, and the students. But because we are teaching slightly older students, you know, they've been a part of the process, and, and we really do share and work on this project together. Did you find the Wikispaces tool first and then have the idea of incorporating it with the students, or had you had this idea of somehow doing something different with the students and went looking for the tool? I went looking for a way of of sharing information and our IT team had mentioned you know something called a wiki and, and I spent about two weeks playing around in uh, in a sandbox uh, until I realized it was a sandbox and I really couldn't use what I was working on 
Um, and I didn't even at that point understand that there were um, wikis that were part of a central management system. I never even heard of the term central management system. And then they were like what I would consider freestanding wikis, like Wikispace. Um, and uh, after I posed a few questions, Adam and his team were, were really helpful and sympathetic to my, uh, my ignorance. And uh, so I've kind of been loyal and promoted them ever since. So that's how it really started. We, we wanted some way of communicating with the students on a regular basis. Did you know that the students would be able to participate back as actively as they can in a wiki, or were you thinking you would just post information for them? No, we wanted something uh, to collaborate on. Um, we were very much uh, in favor of, of the students being the teachers. Um, and I've worked quite, uh, quite a lot with our national coaching body where you know, I've been very much in support of students doing the teaching. I'm, I'm perhaps not as much of a, a spotlight hog as some teachers um, are. I, I maybe that's a self-serving comment, but I'm quite keen for my, my students to do the teaching. I think it's one of the best ways for them to learn. And uh, we thought, well, you know, a wiki from what we had read about it would serve us well there. Now, would you consider these students to be at risk in any way? Um, it was interesting. That came up in a in a Ning conversation with somebody that's a little bit more experienced. And, and I would have to put my hand up and say, I am very inexperienced. And we've probably made one or two mistakes along the way. Um, but we are dealing with 16 to 19-year-old learners. So perhaps it's, it's less of a problem than it would be uh, for school age students. But nevertheless, you know, it's something that we have to be aware of, yeah. So I wouldn't say they're at risk, though. So I posed the, pro uh, I posed the question badly. Um, and you answered uh, the question well, the way I asked it. But I guess what I meant was, are these students that are at risk of dropping out of school or of not finding oh, yeah. um, uh, a path for themselves academically? Um, Southampton as a, as a particular area has very low adult education rates. Um, we're not the most uh, successful of cities in putting forward students. So you could say that our students nationally are in a challenged group. I wouldn't say they were at risk, but we have quite low progression routes. So when we originally designed the course to attract these male learners, these were the groups that were probably at the lower end of those that would progress and stay in education and uh, perhaps would then go out to work or not. Um, we have a term over here called NEAT. That means not in education or educational training. And uh, the NEAT scores for Southampton are some of the highest uh, in England. So potentially we needed something that was going to attract the students. That was uh, the football element. And then we needed something that was going to engage the students a little bit more than we were doing. Uh, and that's where the wiki kind of came in. Without jumping to the end of your story, do you feel this has been successful? Um, it's interesting. I'll, I'll let other people make their own minds up on that. But we had a, a member of staff that wanted or had heard about what was going on in our classroom. And he wanted to know, you know the views of the student. So actually on that very first page, there's a discussion tab. And uh, we asked the students, I just said to the students, you know, the, uh, the marketing department want to know what you think about this type of learning. And I'm not willing to feed them the information. Why don't you? And I think there were about 20, 25 postings on that particular discussion. And uh, that included some of our weaker students making quite, uh, quite sensitive comments. And you have to remember that these are male learners. You know, they're not the, the females with good emotional intelligence. But uh, the biggest point that came out was that using discussions and using the wiki, that the quiet people had a much more prominent voice in the group. And uh, I think that's probably one of the nicest parts of using this type of learning. Uh, how long have you been doing this? Um, I've been doing it badly for about four and a half months and uh, doing it better for maybe the last two or three weeks. But um, we are kind of setting this up to actually go from the start of our new academic year in September. I, I say badly because, you know, it was introduced to our students halfway through a year and, and they very much are the guinea pigs. We are learning together and we are making a lot of mistakes together. And uh, my students are very forgiving of, uh, of, of me pushing these tools on them. I think they quite enjoy it as well, though. I do have the sense, though, that you personally feel like this is making a difference. Absolutely. There, there is no shadow of a doubt. And I would say it's making a difference for certainly the quieter students, the ones that aren't so uh, vocal. And they are working together. 
and this collaboration, this, uh, this sharing, we have to be very careful because we have to maintain um, authorship and an individual component to their learning because we're not an examined course, we're an assignment-based course. But a couple of the, the, uh, the trails we'll show you later on will just go to show you the extent to which these students are working and, uh, I have to say, teaching one another. The biggest thing is that they are doing as much teaching of one another as I am doing of them. So we're, we're, now the page we're looking at is a, a page it's created. It's our notice in, board, yeah. The, the yeah. Ad to is um, Adam Fry, who is uh, one of the founders of Wikispaces. So you know more than I do, Steve. I just know him as Adam. <laughs> uh, well, um, Adam is a great guy, and uh, and I've actually had him on the show before to interview him. Is there anything else you wanted us to look at on this page? I just think that if you're going to have a, a main page, you must have a reason for the students to go there. So we have the live football news appearing on our on our page. It says BBC Sports Live. And I know a lot of our boys at the beginning of the day will pop into college. And instead of, because uh, they don't really know too much about RS feeds, neither did I. But uh, they'll go and grab their news very quickly. You know, they are media snackers, to borrow someone else's term. And uh, they'll jump on, they'll, they'll grab the news. They'll probably have a quick look at um, some of the notices, which we have on a slightly different colored background. And, uh, and the rest of it, you know, is, is just really just ideas that pop up and then we have a very big feel for what we say is um, inspire and challenge so often we'll drop things like the Richard St. John's presentation on why people succeed that's from from the TED website and and maybe there's a at the moment there's an article there on increasing your learning power now we haven't got a way of tagging how many students follow those links particularly but um, I know that one or two of them have commented on them in class so it's very much um, a drip feed approach. So you're using a number of what might be called widgets that you yep. place on the page to kind of maximize the type of content and that seems to be one of the the nice benefits of a flexible wiki like this is being able to sort of quickly put something on there that Yeah. Very much so. Also nice that the 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 very what we call our notice board. We don't call it our home page, we call it the notice board. It it's locked so that they can't change anything on there. And you'll also note there are lots of dates on there, so things like we have a coaching course coming up on the 18th, 19th, and 20th of June. Now, those dates will go on there. They'll stay on there, and if a student misses a deadline, we, we can say to them, look, you know, you've had a letter home, but the dates are on the wiki space, and they've been on there for maybe two or three weeks. There is absolutely no excuse for missed assignments or I didn't make this date or I wasn't aware of that because we have a policy that uh, the students have to look at the wiki at least once a week. So one way in which you've demonstrated a wiki can be used is as a sort of multimedia bulletin board and a, and a landing place for people in one class <coughs> or classes to be able to see what's going on and for you to be able to refer them to the wiki. It really does help me answer, but I didn't realize. You know, I wasn't aware that it was supposed to be handed in or it was going or I didn't realize is, you know, certainly with our 16 to 19 learners, it's, it's been great because we've just been able to say, well, it's been posted. So Adam calls a, a wiki a web page with an edit button. That's and I think, it. <laughs> I think what you've demonstrated so well is the, the, the sort of expansive use of a wiki as a great communication tool um, with your students. Yeah, I think so. Did you want to move on? Yeah, let's go on to, uh, on to the next one. I'm conscious I don't want to uh, send our listeners to sleep. Now, it's pausing as we are working through trail file. Okay. Um, again, it, it kind of grew from there. This page, we don't really need to dwell too long on, but this is the staff room. And uh, I just said it would be nice for some of our staff to get introduced to this and uh, the sorts of resources that we could post on here. So uh, we set up a, a staff room. And that little thing at the back there is a, there's a little chat room at the bottom for staff. And we started to post things like CPD, inset, what we call QIA, quality improvement and insurance. Um, I kept a list of all the web tools as I found them. And uh, I put together kind of like ideas where the staff might start to use some of these tools. But I was very conscious to only offer these tools and allow the staff to come up with their own, you know, what I would say, teaching behind it. Um, as with anyone creating learning resources, you know, I used it as a, as a diary. And uh, again, one or two staff are now are dipping in and, and picking things up and uh, 
you know, I'm just sharing the tools as I'm finding them. So. And the news uh, feeds that you had on the previous page and on this page, you're just uh, getting an RSS news feed and then adding it in as a little widget to the to the wiki space. Yep, wiki supports, uh, wiki spaces supports RSS feeds. So, I mean, they can be anything you like. I mean, again, a bit of education news. Again, a reason for the staff to visit. And Flux is, um, is an independent group. And they do some fantastic work. If uh, people across the water haven't come across Flux, um, uh, they're part of something called Future Lab. They're well worth a visit. And they're really nice people as well. How many students are in the program? Um, we have, uh, we've just let our second years go. So we've had about 24 in the second year. And we have about 29 in two groups in the first year. But what we found is that other students on other courses in the college are, are dipping into these resources and using them because, you know, it, it's open access. Terrific. So um, on to what is, was the main idea was the, the learning bank. That was uh, page four. And, and that's our specification, really. That's every single unit that you can take under what's called the BTEC Nationals in Sport. There are some 37 units and uh, we only teach 18 of them. So I've kind of got this, uh, <laughs> this crazy notion that teachers around the country might come and help us develop these units, uh, an even crazier idea that they might actually develop the resources within them. Um, and as yet, I've sent maybe over 100 emails to different staff, to different colleges in the country, but I've only got about five or six people that are even, even looking at these resources at the moment. So it's um, very much uh, an altruistic notion, but we'll see. Shall we move on to number five? <clears throat> um, this was the first attempt of our students to actually publish anything. This was the first uh, idea of this you know, collaborative authoring, Steve, that um, was one of the main reasons or the, the main ways I'd seen wikis being uh, used. And all I did is I took a topic out of their specification, which was health and safety. There were maybe some 12, 14 uh, different bullet points that we had to cover in class. Um, I signed them the topics, I set them a deadline, and within a week, the page, as you, as you can see, it is what they, uh, they created. And uh, it was fantastic. I was really surprised. So you, all of the students participated in the construction of this single page? Yeah. This was, uh, we said to them, it's, it's a very dry unit, in fairness, Steve. You know, it's, it's, it's pretty, pretty boring stuff, health and safety. And, uh, well, not for everybody, but for our students, they find it quite dry. And uh, we took all the terms, and all I did was created the table of contents, and I said to the guys, right, you know, who wants to do what? And they, I vote, I'll do manual handling, and I'll do the Children's Act, and I'll do fire and safety. And uh, within three hours, this page had been completed, and we used it as evidence for them to having, having knowledge of this particular area. And uh, we gave them, like, the bottom grade. So we have a, an A to E grading scale. And every single student that participated picked up their E-grade, you know, their basic pass criteria for this particular unit. And, uh, you know, I was, I was, everything on this page is, is as they did it. So they put in their own hyperlinks. Um, we had our first image, you know, uh, on here. And we had our first video. Somebody embedded, embedded a video from, uh, from YouTube. So in many senses, this was... Um, you know, this was confirming the students can do this. How, how did they feel after the project was done? <laughs> Mixed reviews, to be honest with you, Steve. Some thought it was ace. Um, I think uh, I learned from this task that, you know, to presume that all our students are digital natives is, is erroneous. You know, some of them found it quite difficult. Um, some of them, there were a little bit of teething problems because, you know, the, the editing functions, they wanted things to be centralized. And, of course, Wikispaces is, is limited a little bit with its editing functions. Uh, they wanted to add color. Um, and Adam will tell you, you can do that, but it, it requires a little bit more than, than the basics. Um, but they generally enjoyed it. You know, they liked that they had something finished. And one of the, the smartest students said, you know, this is all well and good, Christian, but what are you going to do? For next year's students, what are they going to have to create? You know, little does he know that there's a good chance that this will be wiped clean and it will be a task for next year's <laughs> students to do the same. So it's one, heartbreaking, isn't it? One thing that I have noticed about Wikispaces as I've talked to teachers who use it is that it's uh, very difficult to have multiple people editing the same page. 
Yes. And so oftentimes they'll actually create links for individual pages for the specific answers. Uh, because yes. if two students are trying to edit one page at the same time, you actually get a conflict. You do. However, um, we have a very simple, again, you know, we learned that very early on by our error. And um, it was more comical when we did a, a gallery where they were commenting on posters and, and they were trying to provide one another with feedback. But because most of the time the boys were working in the same classroom, uh, they would just shout out, I'm editing. Wait, you, wait your turn. <laughs> <laughs> But um, that's how they solved it. But what they tended to do is they tended to work in a Word document. And then when they were ready, they would copy and paste over. So they were actually only in the, in the wiki space you know, for, a, for a limited amount of time. But the wiki space does give you a warning to say that you know, there are other people editing. So, but, you know, but they solved it. They, they just took it in turns. And uh, they were very mature about it. And what would happen, the, the exciting thing and why I would promote wiki spaces to other staff is is that you'd leave it on a Monday afternoon at four o'clock and you'd come back in you know the next day you had them for a class and somebody would shout there's more someone's added it who added this who added that and uh, they would surprise one another and of course for male learners to do kind of this sort of thing you know being a, um, a study kind of enthusiast doesn't really go well with male groups and, and nobody would admit that they'd actually done a little bit more. But it was quite a few times because, of course, there's a history. So you can see. And there were people working on this at 8, 9, 10 o'clock at night. Fascinating. So been, but I certainly didn't tell the others that because that would have just, just killed them. They would have been mortified. So that was collaborative authoring. That was our first proper wiki task. Um, I don't know what follows next. Uh, discussions. You know, wikis also allow you to have discussions. And um, this is our first attempt at what we called an out-of-classroom experience. And uh, we just, uh, my staff, that was really there's three of us, have no blended learning, teaching, pedagogy knowledge whatsoever. And uh, we set them up a discussion. And it really fell quite flat on its face, to be honest with you, Steve. It, we didn't get very far. And then we came up with a policy that if you wanted to pass or you wanted to use this evidence, we decided that it was three accurate postings and you had to employ the appropriate terminology. And if you did that, then you, you got the basic pass type of uh, grade again. And we gave them the first 10 minutes of an assignment time to either read or post comments. And um, very, very quickly, we had a, a mass of information. And it says in the top there, on this particular discussion, I think there were 159 postings from 22 students. So uh, the trail fire marker took me to the learning over understanding the effects of personality and motivation on sports performance. That's but it, right. It took me to the front page. It didn't actually take me to the discussion tab. If you click on the discussion tab, then we'll have to go back. But you'll see there are there are three discussions that we had on this particular topic. Um, one was personality and motivation. <laughs> this is one for my uh, colleagues across the water. Whether David Beckham was going to America for the money or for the love of developing football. And um, I can't remember, I think the third one, our team player is more extrovert. And uh, or although there were only 112 replies, you know, there's some 1,000 views. I think that was more to the point that the students were learning how to look. But, you know, they were certainly uh, reading and going back and learning um, from their from their peers. So that's a great idea. So you gave them a question that you knew was sports related that they would be very interested in talking that's about. Right. But we we made it a point that if they did they did well on that task. Now um, I heard a term uh, used by a, a colleague in America. He called them insurance grades. So maybe if they fell down on a particular test, that they could use this to their insurance information to show that they did have the understanding. And uh, this is very much like a, what a pass grade is. It's the very much the bottom grade. And when we, uh, we took that transcript of that information, and then we took it into the classroom, and I gave the students the transcript of the discussions, and then we, did a, we have a system called traffic lighting. So green, yeah, it was on the button. Yellow, yeah, the, the student's got a good idea, but you know, hasn't quite really done enough to get the grade. And red, no, you've got it wrong. And when we actually uh, color-coded the discussion, it slowly moved from, from ye red, yellows, and greens through to predominantly yellows and greens. And I think the last 15 or so comments are all green. So that just says to me there is something going on between the beginning of the discussion and the end of the discussion. 
and that's their understanding is developing. How did you color code the comment? It's called traffic lighting. Just a real simple yellow, uh, sorry, red is stop, you, you're getting this wrong. Yellow is, you know, proceed with caution, but you, you're doing okay. And then green is go. Now that's our traffic light system, but I think in America it's not quite the same, is it? Well, I, I guess I'm interested in, did you actually do that on paper, or, or is the color code somewhere in the, the actual it, discussion? We did it on a Word document. Um, we just had a Word document, and uh, the students had access to that Word document on a, on a shared area at college, and then they just used highlighters. They just used the color highlighting. So did you, take, did you take all of the postings that had been in the discussion page and, and paste <laughs> yeah. them over to the Word document? Just a copy and paste activity, yeah. And I, I've actually asked Adam to see if we can actually have a, a traffic light system added to the discussion so that staff can actually mark the discussions. And uh, that's uh, on the list of maybe something for the future for Adam. He's going to have a little look at that. I think it's got really big uh, potential there for other staff. Fascinating. But we'll see. You know, maybe, maybe you've got more sway than I have, Steve. Maybe you can tell Adam <laughs> you think it's a good idea. Did I say I knew Adam? <laughs> yeah. Mr. Frey to me, I'm afraid. Okay, um, the seventh part. Oh, there you go. I didn't let you down, Steve. Look, there's the discussion that followed. Oh, good. So, again, you know, a lot of them have got little football icons as their pictures. And I'm not wanting to give too much away from these students, but, you know, some of these students are not very keen on writing, and they don't like putting lots of prose together but what was really nice is that they would actually start to comment on one another's work so maybe five or six comments down Nathan says I believe Chris Manning's example of Cantona as someone who can handle the crowd abuse is a poor one so they're starting to actually correct one another now if anybody's going to go away and do this I would actually set up some ground rules for example we now tell the students that it has to have correct capitals and spelling and grammar because they tended to text type so um we actually had to you know, bring that in to make it kind of like um, academically rigorous, shall we say. So it's, uh, it's something that we had to do. That is great. And we call that, do you have the term AFL, assessment for learning? We might have that term. Uh, because I'm not actually in the classroom, I don't know. Right. Well, AFL is quite big over here at the moment and different ways to do AFL. So I would suggest that these students were AFLing all the time and, and they were picking up. And as a staff member, I was actually picking up those that understood and those that didn't. Now, the downside for me is if the students got the wrong tact, then the, the, uh, the discussion would go off on the wrong tact. Now, if I could have red-lighted a comment quite quickly, I could stop that from happening. And uh, you'll see you know, where I jump in every now and again. You know, I've actually either developed the... Uh, uh, the discussion or, or, or I've stopped it or I've reminded them but um, what would happen is the, the students would come up to me at break and say Christian can you post something else we're bored or, or we've finished this part <laughs> can we can we have can we have another question don't you so love you, that yeah yeah it was quite amusing and if I didn't go on there once a day they got angry so they would tell me I, I had to I had to do a better job hmm. so okay I'll let others have fun with that one. Um, this is what we learned pretty soon afterwards. Um, there is no policy as far as I can find. Um, cool Cat, the blog Cool Cat, I'm sure a lot of people have, you know, either know of or come across. She seems to be a, a very thoughtful person. And um, we used some of her ideas and we put together a wiki charter because we have a classroom charter. And um, I'm a big fan of quotes and I have a, a collection of them. And we just went for collaboration accountability and respect and we made a little movie um, if anybody wants that they can get that off of um, off of Google video or I can provide them with the link you know please go ahead and use it and and actually improve it and send me back the improvement because I don't think it's it's by any means finished but so cool cat is Vicki Davis from yes. Georgia and Vicki and Adam together are presenting um, at the educational conference here called NECC in a a pavilion I run on the called the the open source pavilion. So she and Adam are are quite familiar with each other, and in many ways, I think Vicky really began to bring uh, spotlight to Wikispaces. Well, 
I'm, uh, I'm getting all the right plugs in here. Can I just assure everybody there is no payment for this particular right. It's, it's purely, <laughs> purely, purely chance. This is just uh, plowing around. And then um, if you scroll to the bottom of the page, you'll see that these are the posters I have up and around my classroom. I, I am a real uh, big believer in challenge and inspire. They're the two words that you always hear me talk about um, in and around my classroom. And this was just a slide, pro, you know, a slide presentation. It was a PowerPoint presentation I had made, um, and I just converted them to uh, JPEG files. It was a tip that I found in a magazine that if you have a PowerPoint, you can actually save them as a JPEG. I saved them as a JPEG, uploaded them to slide.com, and that is, um, you know, what we believe is uh, our classroom is all about. So it's about respect. Uh, David Beckham, you know, there. It's about attitude and uh, it's about um, preparation. So, and those images we thought we felt conveyed those uh, um, those values. So that's why that one's there. Okay, um, let's move on. So, you know, again, you know, you find a new tool like slide.com and uh, we had played around with galleries and then the students had to do a, a new task again for, for psychology of sport it just matches in because that's what we were teaching at the time and we looked at teamwork and there were eight or nine uh, key terms to describe um, what makes a good team and, and the factors that they have to, to bring and on this particular task I said look go and find ten images upload them to slide.com and if you put your cursor over the image it actually tells you what it's representing so it should say what it's representing Stuart Green hasn't done that but the uh, the World Cup would be the shared purpose and then uh, the next picture you know will mean something else and something else and then I actually mark their work by the selection of their images I wonder if uh, Chris Mitchin is the second image on the screen shows you the, the, uh, the actual terms there and it was a very, very simple uh, task. They thoroughly enjoyed it. And, uh, you know, that's it. There's nothing more to it. It's just a very simple teaching tool. So Chris's is the one that looks like it's in a television screen? That's right. You're very good at conveying the, the visual images that I'm not conveying with my audio, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, you're doing great. Um, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, I'm a Lance Armstrong fan. You know, you've got to love that Texan. And... Uh, Again, so some of them pander to my uh, my personal beliefs. So if uh, you look at Chris Mitchell's slide, you know the flashing bits and the and the transitions are just sim dead simple selections. And that particular image that I'm looking at at the moment is two teams fighting, and we call that a faulty process. So you know they were dead dead simple. And the interesting thing was, again, if if you have time to do this, if you look at the images of the first two or three. These were the brighter students that got through the task quite quickly and they'd uploaded it. As you move further down, you'll see the images kind of re being reflected. They're similar images, not that they've copied, but they've certainly, you know, taken the ideas. And then once or twice, you know, you get something very creative. Now, for anyone that's listening to this, a term that we have to convey is something called um, interpersonal task dependence where more than one person is needed to complete a task. I'll give you an example. A tug of war would be a very good example. And, and I was finding it very difficult to find examples. And I think it's Joe Wright simply puts two people on a tandem bike and says, you know, they can't do it without one another. And how right he is. So you learn from your students. So, there, are, there are a lot on the page. Joe, I think, is the actual last one. He is, but luckily for me, Steve, you'll note there's a table of contents on the right, so you can just click on Joe and it'll take you to the bottom of the page. But, you know, every single student that, that did this particular task, you know, again, got the basic pass. Now, the other way for them to do it would be to write up the term and write the definition and provide an example. Now, you know, both um, particular methods answer the question, and I didn't enforce the students. They could have done either. They could have written up as an assignment or they could have done a slide presentation, you know. And uh, one student who was very much um, wary of doing this particular task because he felt his IT skills um, weren't there really were Lewis Gundry. And the nice thing is that Stuart had put his presentation on and he had sat down with Lewis and he taught him how to do it and Lewis was over the moon. 
you know, so his work is now published on the internet. So for him, that's a great achievement. Do they end up showing their family and friends, do you think? Um, good question. I mean, for September next year, we, you know, we are going to encourage the parents to be a part of this. And uh, maybe we'll come back to that question. Do they share it? You know, they loved it when they were found out that they were actually mentioned on someone else's website. Someone else had mentioned something on here, and they thought that was pretty cool. And, uh, you know, I just think they like sharing. They like, you know, they like seeing their work shown, you know, to a greater audience. Let's move on to eight, because this is, uh, sorry, on to ten, otherwise I think people will be falling asleep by now. Um, the wiki teaching, you know, this is something, this is a work in progress. So um, this is where I intend to go on and, and share some ideas. But on this particular page is my, my favorite tool. And again, the best thing about these tools is the people that make them are dead friendly and helpful. And this is um, my guide to Web 2.0 and wiki teaching. And there's all the tools that I've come across and in kind of what I think is a little bit of a map. Um, and I would strongly advocate anybody to use Bubble Us. It's, uh, it's very simple. Have you found that on the page there, Steve? I did. It's about halfway down. You see the, or a little bit more, That's you right. see the bubble... Um, map or whatever that's yep. called and then in the top left hand corner you can actually increase the size now that's that's obviously created in bubble us and then that's embedded on the page you know as a widget as you kind of call it steve you know and and they're all the th sorts of things that you know when i come up with new ideas and and my students have seen this document and um at the time we didn't know too much about delicious and other things like that and we called it tagging but i don't know if that's the right term you know tagging websites but um, again, you know, we're, we're, we're learning. And, and there's quite a few uh, different tools on there. And uh, all the ones in the bottom right-hand corner, we have tried to use um, to varying degrees of success. But Bubble Us deserves a mention because everything I've asked that guy to do, he's done and he's been fantastic. And he always responds. The people that are creating these tools are so friendly and, and supportive. It's, it's great. So when you, um, when you magnify that to be able to read it, if you click and drag, it will move around so you can see the parts that are off the screen. Yep. Or you can jump onto Bubble Us and you can see it and then you can save it as an image. And this is really a, an important feature because my students, they were logging uh, class discussions. We only have one PC in a teaching room. So often we have somebody that will sit on and if we're having a class discussion, they will uh, record the class discussion in a bubble map and then they will either collaborate People can go and add things to it after the lesson is finished if they think the bubble map's you know incomplete, or they can have a copy of that and that goes into their assignment as evidence that they've taken part in a discussion and that's our record of where we went with it. And uh, a lot of the times the students will, will use that as the foundation for taking classroom learning out of the classroom, and and it's the starting point for their assignments. What's a wiki gardener? <laughs> a wiki gardener. I'm going to call him by his name. Our wiki gardener is Ryan Lambert. He's the guy that corrects my mistakes. That uh, He is just somebody who's a really good student, and um, if he sees a mistake, he corrects it. That's all he does. It's a great He's, task. Uh, great role. Yeah. Uh, we have a wiki fairy as well. Now, a wiki gardener does all the functional things like the links. Uh, a wiki fairy makes things look pretty. And... Uh, when I uh, introduced the term wiki fairy, none of the males wanted to be called a wiki fairy. So uh, we don't have a wiki fairy. We just have a wiki gardener. It's not, <laughs> the wiki fairy is just not masculine enough. So, you know, I would uh, strongly advocate people use uh, Bubble Us or any other mind mapping tool. And in the staff inset, there's, um, there's something called TAP, which helps staff introduce mind mapping to students so it doesn't just become a, you know, a mundane thing of putting a task on. Um, the next uh, trail is, is, or the next couple of slides are about quizzes. So once the students have done their learning, um, one of the ways I actually get them to consolidate their learning is that they write the exam or they write the quiz. Blockbusters was an old 18, uh, 1980s quiz show for teenagers. And, um, you know, if you haven't come across that in America, which I doubt you would have done, it's just the first letter is the answer of the word. So if it was uh, what H deals with, you know, insurance practices in the sports centre, it would be health and safety. And, uh, and you can play against one another. So our students often write quizzes. So that's the first one, bubble, that's uh, Blockbusters, which is excellent. Um, the next one is 
um, Purpose Games, which is fantastic again. Um, its tagline is to learn to play, play to learn. Um, and uh, I've shared this with a few of my staff and uh, a few of my students, and uh, they're making Purpose Games all the time. So they actually create, for example, uh, the ones you can see on this particular page are the bones of the body or a, or a map, and then you can add the dots and you can add the answers to the dots. So you might have a couple of uh, dots on the map of England. It would be London, Manchester, Newcastle. And then you have to uh, correctly identify the terms. The nice thing about this website is no sooner have you made it and then you've played it, other people around the world are playing it. So we had a couple of students do one of, uh, of the foot, and they put some markers on the foot. And before they'd even got to play it, somebody had played it and uh, got the top score. So, of course, they had to beat them. So what's interesting for me is on this Purpose Game site, there is another trail fire marker. Yes. It looks as though it's, it's part of someone else's longer trail. Yours is identified with a K. Yep. And theirs is a small B. And if I look at their, if I just put my cursor over their small B, I can see that someone else has this in their link set. I go back to the K and I get your uh, trail again. Okay. Well, I can't, find, I can't see the B, but I can see the K. So... That's interesting, but uh, yeah, again, another real simple tool, Steve, you know, and, and the thing is, I, I've tried to find things and use things that other staff can use. It shouldn't just be people that are happy, and if the students are making the tests, I think the learning and making the test is probably as important as what it's testing. Okay, so, and I think the final one is an American teenager designed something called Quizlet, and uh, again, you know, I won't bore people with a definition, but, you know, take a look at this site. It's fantastic. It's the best quizzing tool I've found, and it's also the simplest. And uh, one of the things I like, it, like about it is it has a drag and drop key terms, so key terms and definitions. Uh, so for those kinesthetic learners that like to do things, it's uh, really impressive. And if you've got an interactive whiteboard, I can just see students fighting over this, you know, to play on the interactive whiteboard. You know where you can drag words on top of their definitions, and then they and then the pairings disappear. So Quizlet, well done to a teenage boy who's still in high school. But he doesn't reply to my email, so I don't like him. <laughs> oh, interesting. interesting. So um, challenge and inspire. Um, this is free to any staff member that wants to glean what they like out of it. These are the most inspiring stories I can find. Um, some have been relayed to me. Some of them have, uh, you know, I've, I've found by chance. And um, this was my first introduction to podcasting. Um, I've got a problem with the term podcasting because it makes it sound really, uh, um, really complicated. You know, it's just recording audio and making it available. So the uh, the podcasts on here are, are linked to files which I've done in Audacity, and then I've just uploaded to the Wiki Space and um, just put a little widget in to play it. So the first one there is um, something called the Hacker. This might not be too familiar with the people in the States, but it's the pre-match war routine of the Maori, Maoris from New Zealand when they play rugby. And as a piece of uh, audio, um, if that doesn't inspire your students at 8.30 in the morning, nothing will. So, again, so I'm not seeing that one. Um, it's number 14 of 17. Have you got that? I am on that page. And you okay. said the first one is... Um, it says one click away. Oh, one click away. And if I go down, I have a lot of white space on that page. Okay. That's because, obviously, the size of the screen varies. And because there's a table of contents, if you keep scrolling down, Steve, this is one of the, the smaller problems with the wiki. You know, depending on the size of your screen, it fits to your screen. So if you scroll uh, right down below the table of contents, you'll come to the first... Um, media clip and I wonder I'm gonna play it Steve so I'll be warned it's quite aggressive and that plays directly from the uh, the wiki space now it's not one click away <coughs> is it the one above one click away it's the the blue play button can you hear it Steve I'm hearing uh, some background noise, but I can't hear it loud enough to know what it is. Okay. Well, that's their, their war dance. So, you know, I just pop a few things on there, Steve, for them. And then there's some other great stories. A lot of them are American stories, funnily enough. John Goddard, um, 38 Lemon 
David Welsh, Rick Hansen, Dean Carnares. They're all American guys. So there's you know some really spectacular people in America, and um, that's just my way of sharing it. And then the podcasts are just clips out of the audio books. So that was my introduction to podcasting, and I'm not very good, so I'm still learning. Okay, um, we're nearly at the end. It's a long trail, so if anybody's been managed to stay with the uh, the interview this long, it's it's a that's a fair feat. But voice thread. You're selling yourself short. This this is absolutely fascinating, and uh, <laughs> I, I uh, actually really liked going through the sites this way. Well, you know, we there, other people can do it too, and this is like six months condensed into, you know, sixteen trails. But of all the things that I've found, and uh, recently, voice thread, um, it, it rocked my boat, shall we say, uh, and that's why I'm a geek because things like this really excite me and it's not because you know I'm not a good teacher and I can't do things in the normal way I'd like to think I'm quite a good practitioner but this really does open up the world um, it's a you upload an image and you can upload your audio and then you can share it and the ideas I've had for this site are just endless um, we did a little bit of teacher training on it and we brought in some language teachers some English teachers obviously myself and um, a couple of my students are using it to complete a piece of work on ethics and values. Now, how do you convey your emotions and your true feelings in a piece of re written prose? Well, you have to have great vocabulary skills. But um, my students often go to football matches and they see poor ethics and values and they see racist abuse and they see uh, gender discrimination and they, they hear the, the officials sworn at. So I said to them, look, you know, go and search and, and find images and report back what you want. So that's what they've done, and they've done it through VoiceThread. And uh, the nice thing is, is once you've created your VoiceThread, you can share it with anybody. Um, if you upload a, a slide with a poem on it, for example, um, the English staff like the idea of asking all their students to go home and read the poem. Now... It's a very simple task, you know, which student wouldn't like to go home and, and record their voice and upload it? And then the nice thing is that they could listen to one another and, and listen to the inflection and the emotion uh, and the tempo. How, how do you do that in a classroom? Well, I, I think this, this tool is really splendid. And then for the languages, you know, um, the other idea the language team said is they were actually going to get the students to give presentations and they were going to record their presentations and they were going to do AFL on the finished piece of work and then we're going to get them to correct it. Uh, it's, it's Pandora's box if you've got some imagination. Great on, site. Steve. I'll, I'll stop for a moment. No, no, I, I love the site. My biggest uh, uh, barrier for VoiceThread is that it requires that you use the VoiceThread site to view a presentation. So unlike yeah. YouTube or Google, you can't actually put that presentation somewhere else. No, I understand that, but I need more people to to vote with their email and uh, and and ask him, you know, because eventually they're going to uh, cave in on, you know, the, eventually this site I would think will become a paid for site. You know, I can't see him doing anything else, but he's going to do his best to keep it to a minimum. Or as a bunch of teachers, we have to email at this guy and say, look, you know, we're pushing your site. We think it's got great potential. Please, please, can we embed it? You know, you don't have to be able to take the, the whole presentation out, but, you know, to be able to embed it in your different sites. So I've already asked him. So anybody that listens to this uh, particular interview, please just drop him a line and say, can we please embed it into our websites? Because that's how he'll get it known, you know. So it's about working what we would say symbiotically, you know, working together for, uh, for what is a great, a great tool. It is a great tool. Okay. Nearly towards the end. Oh, uh, I mean, for those of you that, you know, weren't perhaps so inspired by the different tools and the actual, the actual teaching and learning, the other way we use um, Wikispaces is for something what we, we've termed grade track. And it might be because we've got slightly older students, but I don't see why any students from the age of about eight or nine can't do this. Uh, this is just Google Docs. It's just a Google spreadsheet. And uh, what you can see below is the students recording their grades. And our grades are recorded um, in a certain fashion, uh, past merit and distinction, or two, four, and six. Uh, it's a little bit more complicated than that, but 
Um, and those numbers won't make a great deal of sense unless you know what's available, uh, what grade can be awarded. But we as staff have a policy that we do not record marks. We grade marks, we hand them back to students, and then the students update their grade track. So what they get is a, a current knowledge of how well they're doing, um, the pieces of work that they've got omitted, the pieces of work they still need to do, and then at what we've broken down a year into into like three semesters or four semesters, I can't remember which now, my word, into, into two semesters. There are four semesters over the, the two years that we teach the students. And at the end of every four or five months, we sit down and we check, uh, we check all their works in place and that the grades that are on our grade track are the same as the marks on the pieces of work and then we sign them out. And KST is Christian still, is me signing those students out as the course leader. And um, yeah, they, they've been fantastic. So they actually go on, the, there's a grade track link here to the Google spreadsheet. Yep. They go to that spreadsheet, fill it out, and then it updates uh, the image on the site. Yep. That's it. Simple as that. Now, from a parent's point of view, you know, we've been playing around, again, with, like, data protection. We have something in this country called data protection. And uh, I had to get the students to sign a piece of paper. Now, if you look on the far left-hand side, there was a unique um, student identification number. Now, originally, that's what we displayed. And then the students got fed up trying to remember their, their identification number. So they said, look, just put our names on. This is ridiculous. They're quite competitive animals anyway. So uh, we said, OK, fine. So they've got their names on, and they just go on. When they get a piece of work back, they jump online, they add the score, and, uh, and that's it. But the parents now can see exactly what their students are doing. I don't think I was aware of how easy it would be to embed a Google spreadsheet into a, another document. Um, neither was I. Um, I, don't, I didn't know there was a hard way, Steve, and I didn't know there was an easy way, I, if I'm truly honest. I mean, I know that sounds, I don't know if that sounds arrogant or naive or quite what, you know, I don't have any ICT training, so I didn't know it couldn't be done. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go play with it as soon as we're done. <laughs> I think it's just an embed feature. I mean, again, the wiki space is very happy to receive information. And you can't actually, of course, you can't change the grade on the screen we're looking at. You have to go to Google, log in, and, and change the document. So, you know, but that's where we're going to be next year. You know, so. Right, but but, we, but having, the, having the link to the Google spreadsheet makes a ton of sense, and then they just have to refresh the page to get the uh, updated image. That's right. Now, just because I'm a little bit skeptical with, with IT, we actually also keep a copy of a, a hard copy of this in our, uh, in our staff area, and we do that kind of like once a, once a fortnight just to make sure. But what we found is, and this is the nice thing, is as soon as you make the students responsible, then they do it. You know, they, they want to see their grades. Now, um, in, the, in the premiership, in the NFL, so to speak, we have um, the teams have something called Optica results. So uh, the students' idea was, well, let's find out what the average score for each particular piece of work is. And, um, you know, so they knew kind of like what the average for the group was. And here we have group one and group two. And uh, group one clearly are better students because they've got a 10.9 average, whereas uh, group two have got a 9.69 average. Now, if, I, if only I could tell you how angry Group 2 were with Tom Biggs not finishing his work, and he decided to leave the course, but Group 2 are going to be Group 1 next semester. There is fire in their belly. Oh, that's so just they, fascinating. They are, they, are, they are angry that Tom, well, obviously, even if Tom had got some basic grades there, you know, it would have been a lot closer. But um, Tom kind of left the course in about January. But uh, so ended up with a with a no score, and um, and James Davis missed out on one piece of work, so he missed the deadline. So um, yeah, Group Two are after Group One. So you've taken individuals; their interest in sports is already going to orient them toward team competitiveness, yeah. and and brought that into play. Yeah, that's uh, just a little bit of cooperative competition, we call it. So, you know, they all rely on one another, and the interesting thing was. Group one, and you've got Ryan Lambert in that group, the kid that's kind of quite generous, started to help Joshua Tier with his work and uh, formed kind of like a little study group. 
because Josh was struggling and Ryan was was doing okay. You know, okay, you know, he's getting some of the highest scores. And uh, he buddied up with Josh to help him through, which, again, you know, because they could see what the other students were doing in their group, it had a positive effect. Now, I'm not being naive to say that th this doesn't work for everybody, you know, and, and people may question, you know, should you be showing one another their results? And all I have to say is that we originally only posted their, their codes, and it was the students that wanted their names on the list, not us. So it's uh, it, it, it's relevant to this particular group. And the final trail, um, if you want to know what the students think, and uh, this is what they think. This is nothing to do with me. This was um, uh, set up um, by two students that were leaving early, and then you know we added a little bit to it. The video that was uh, it's from Google Video was made on a on a student's phone. Actually, it was my phone. I should oh, that's a lie. It was made on my phone, but the students then edited it in Windows Movie Maker. And um, then before they left the course this year, Dean Faithful, Jamie, Luke, Phil, Craig, and the rest of the group there um, had the opportunity to uh, write um, a leaving comment. And um, yeah, th th that kind of makes me quite proud. I think Luke Yates, when he says, uh, it's the people that ran the course that changed my attitude the most, you know, that's kind of a quite empowering thing. Okay, there's a few spelling mistakes and bits and pieces, but... He said, I pushed myself from being predicted a two passes, PP grade, to an MM grade, which is like um, two E grades to two, two C grades. So in American terminology, that would be you know, a very basic pass to a, you know, a 3.0 type grade, uh, which at times was hard, but I'm proud of myself that I didn't give up. The course was run in such a way that it gave me the chance to meet and make really good friends. I go on to Bath University, which was never an option when I started college. I'm looking to go when I get... Uh, I'm looking forward to the summer is what he means to say and he's going out to America to coach So that's a yeah. great quote here's one that's sticking out for me this course I feel is different from any other course though because you are treated like an adult and given responsibility for your own learning while also being encouraged to attempt the higher grades yeah that's that was that's Craig great. yeah and again you know we seem to have a bigger impact on the students that have less ability you know, Bill Puckett and Sam James are actually coming out to America on, on soccer scholarships, so they've done particularly well. And um, and Phil Phil Day is a as a student who um, we really respect. You know, has has helped me to challenge, and this is a term we use all the time. It's helped me to challenge and expand my knowledge. You know, so you know, some things work, some things don't. You know, at the bottom there, we, we put up a, a grid to allow students to write comments about one another before they left. And, uh, you know, and that bombed because very few students put comments in there. So, you know, we'll, we'll try again next year and we'll see how we get on. But the exciting thing is, for me, we have two weeks, like, a, like you guys have an, uh, an Easter break sort of thing. Um, we've got a, a break and the students are doing some uh, mashing up. So they're going onto YouTube and different places, collecting video clips, and they're importing them into uh, Windows Movie Maker to make some commercials, or shall we say commercials or advertising uh, campaigns for different sports governing bodies to address a particular um, issue. And as soon as they're done, I'm going to post them, but I'm really excited about those. I think they're going to be hilarious. So this is our, our next attempt is to mash things up and use all these different tools and, uh, and see where we go. Christian, I think you've just done something really amazing here. I'm really appreciative that you would take the time to, to walk us through this. And uh, I think this has really been um, a tremendous amount of fun. You are in the Classroom 2.0 social network. I am. And I, uh, I, what's your username there? Do you remember? I, yes, I... Again, you know, we have, we have a policy of using our real name, so you know, I've tried to stay with that. I'm Christian still wherever I go, and uh, it's always all, always all one word, and uh, yeah, that's how I am. I'm also I need to give a plug as well to Next Gen. Uh, Chris Craft is a uh, one of the first people I ever got to spoke got to speak with about you know ICT and Doug Bolshaw, and uh, these two people I really look up to because I think they were the ones that got me started. So they're, they're part of something called Next Gen. And yeah, I'm in 2.0 with you guys. 
and um, yeah, just plugging along. <laughs> Christian, thanks so much for the time. No problem, Steve.